everybody. Hello everybody, welcome to the 20 something episode of QWR Nature News. And we are here up at the bridge. So this is a familiar spot for a lot of you guys. Um, but we have something a little bit unusual here in the water today. So say hello to Renee and Kara, everybody. And, um, so today we're going to talk about dragonflies and damselflies. So dragonflies and their smaller cousins, damselflies, are amazing helicopter-like insects that can be found near water bodies all across Long Island. And with their fascinating life history, their admirable traits like eating mosquitoes, and also their beautiful jewel-toned bodies, these guys in the order Ozonata are actually really hard not to love, right? some of the largest diversity of dragonflies and damselflies. We have 194 species in New York, in New York State and 84 species in Suffolk County. So quite a lot of species of dragonflies. And they're also really good indicators of water quality because they're aquatic life stage, which we're gonna talk a little bit about. They have to have very specific environments and pollution can greatly affect that. So flies are very similar in that they both have two pairs of wings so they have four wings in total they have large heads they have an elongated abdomen and they have big giant compound eyes so what makes them different so let me look at which ones on which eye okay so the damsel flies over here when they are at rest you can see that they fold up their wings towards the top of their back so at rest, those guys have their wings folded. Dragonflies at rest have their wings out like a plane. So that's a good way to tell the difference. The other difference is dragonflies will actually hunt. Oops! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no <way. laughs> water. That's okay. That's not a big deal, Kara. Um, we'll get that later. <laughs> um, so dragonflies will actually hunt in flight, whereas damselflies will sit and wait for their prey. So those are some, some small differences of dragonflies and damselflies. So Kara's gonna talk to you a little bit about their really incredible life history. All right. So I just saw some dragonflies flying behind us today and freshwater um, and other types of waters, like even with some salinity can support dragonflies and damselflies. So we see lots of different species here at the refuge, but their metamorphosis or their life history is really amazing. So um, let's take a look at their life history. The females deposit eggs on the surface of water, and sometimes they'll, they'll deposit their eggs on vegetation on the side of the water, on debris, even like this stump that's behind me. And their larvae will hatch and they can take five to 14 molts to become fully grown. And that can take up to six years. So the amazing part about dragonfly, dragonfly and damselfly larva or the nymphs is that they are totally different than the adults. They don't swim, I mean, sorry, they don't fly, but rather they swim in the water and they'll eat lots of different things. So before we move on, I wanted to show you all just a picture of a nymph. Um, this is, a, a darner nymph and you can see it's actually eating a small fish so instead of wings in their nymph stage they have gills for breathing in the water and the dragonfly nymphs have gills inside their abdomen but the damselfly nymphs have gills on the tip of their abdomen um, so that's one way if you see a nymph in the water you can tell the difference but these nymphs will eat other insects they'll eat snails worms leeches tadpoles, and even small fish. So as we were saying, it can take up Oops. to six years for them to um, be ready to turn into an adult dragonfly. They have extendable jaws, 
And um, like you can see here, this is another darner. And if you see those extendable jaws, that's how, at the end they have pinchers, but every species is different. And that is perfect for eating mosquito larva. So we know that mosquitoes lay their eggs in water. Dragonfly nymphs will actually eat mosquito larva. So just another reason why we want to have dragonflies around. Um, so back to the life history. If we look at that stage that says larva, it can, as we were saying, take a very long time when they're living underwater. But um, they will crawl out of the water when they're ready. It's usually in the very early morning and they will shed their exoskeleton. And underneath, of course, they'll turn into an adult dragonfly with wings. And now they're not living underwater. They're flying around eating insects um, on the wing, which is really cool. In their adult stage, they can live for one to six months and they can fly 22 to 34 miles per hour. And um, if you see those eyes, well, I think I have another picture of a, these are some damselflies, but their eyes, they have 30,000 lenses and that helps them find mosquitoes. So some other cool species that we have around Long Island are bluets and damselflies. These two are actually two endemic species, and that means that they only live in the Northeast. They're not found anywhere else in the world. And the New York Natural Heritage Program has a lot of really great information. Um, they've done surveys on Long Island about all the different kinds of species that we have, but the Pine Barrens bluet and the Scarlet bluet both of those species are endemic to the Northeast, so they are a rarity throughout the world, but found here on Long Island. And then um, I thought this was a really cool thing. If you start to get into identifying dragonflies and bluets, um, you can look up some resources, even field guides that will help you. There are, maybe a camera would be especially helpful, but these are all different species and the pattern indicates what species they are. So dragonflies have been around before dinosaurs. They're 300 million years old. They used to have a two foot wingspan, so they were like hawks. Um, now they're much smaller. You can use binoculars, cameras to help you look for dragonflies. And um, we really like to celebrate dragonflies here at the refuge because they are a really good indicator of environmental quality because they will grow up in water. Pesticides will kill them. So if you have a lot of dragonflies around, that's a really good thing. And we thought it was especially fun to do this, this topic today because New York State Dragonfly Day is the second Sunday in June. So it's on June 13th this year. So it's still coming up. You have time to prepare and get out there and look for dragonflies. It's <laughs> dragging by, but it is floating away all the way over there, so I'm going to have to venture over there later. But the green darner you may be familiar with because it's a much larger species, a very common species here in New York, but it is a common species of dragonfly here. Um, and the green darner is really fascinating because, well, many of these guys are non-migratory and the young will overwinter here on Long Island. Um, it's actually cool because some of these green darners will actually migrate and they'll migrate during the fall to warmer climates, warmer areas, and they'll migrate south and there they'll lay eggs and they'll have young and once the young are developed into adults again, they will actually then go on and migrate back up north and kind of continue the same cycle. But when these guys are migrating, they're actually traveling about 80 miles a day. So that's a long ways for such a small little animal. So that's what they do in about a day. And then what's also really cool is that these adults actually only live about six months. So they're making this journey all for their young and for their next generation. So the, they're kind of similar to that of monarchs, which kind of complete their migration in four generations. Um, but these guys will do it within usually one or two generations. So pretty amazing species is the green darner, um, and they're a larger bodied dragonfly. Can't <laughs> 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 so We want to open it up now for some questions. Does anybody have questions about dragonflies? And we'll give you guys just a few minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry for folks that are having some trouble hearing. Um, 
it is a little bit windy here today, so. And so we've got some, if you ever come to our bridge, you'll notice we've got a lot of different animals here. Um, we saw some largemouth bass over there. We saw some of the sunfish. If you tuned in to our fish of Old Ice Pond, you're familiar with all those different species we have. Um, and we have been having some big snapping yes. turtles kind of swim around us. Again, though, they're nothing to be worried about when they're in the water. They're not as vulnerable. They're really great swimmers. They're well adapted, so they just kind of mind their own business and go on their way. They'll, they'll kind of be a little nosy, look at what we're doing, <laughs> make sure we're not giving them any food, and then they'll go on their way. No questions coming in yet. But we hope you enjoyed this episode of QWR Nature News up here at the bridge. Um, and uh, if you do have any questions about dragonflies or fish or turtles, oh, we just got one. Okay, Mary would like to know, um, do dragonflies sting? Oh, I, they don't. Oh, hold on. I'm going to come over to you. <laughs> hold on a minute. <laughs> no, you're they don't, so they don't have a stinger at all um, like other insects do at the tip of their ab abdomen like bees, um, but they, they have a mandible, that's how they eat, and um, so they, they won't hurt people, they won't bite people with their mandible, but it is something to keep in mind, they don't have a, any stingers, so they won't hurt you or sting you, they're looking for mosquitoes, so we want them around, and um, sometimes though, if, if there's a lot of dragonflies around and you, you're, you don't want them, just, you know, walk away, that's what we always tell our campers. Very Put cool. your space between them. But they're, they are amazing. I don't know if we have any around that we can do yeah. anything to. We were looking around for some dragonflies and we saw some damselflies on the surface of the water. Yes. It might be hard for the camera to pick up, but we, um, we've we been seeing some really cool dragonflies around. Yeah, they're just oh, so right. tiny. I know. I don't know if the... We do have another question from Barbara. Um, and she would like to know how long do dragonflies live for? Um, underwater for up to six years and they'll molt multiple times and then as an adult they can live um, for around six months at the maximum um, and a, sometimes one month in temperate zones like like here man amazing very cool well I'll give you guys another look of uh, the pond up here by the bridge and our trails are open. Say hi to Renee. Our trails are open every day still from sunrise to sunset. Um, and you are welcome to come and visit yourself and keep an eye out for dragonflies and damselflies and um, turtles and all that else that lives here at the refuge. Oh, we have another, oh, a comment from Natalie Wagenberg. She would like to know, oh, she wants to let us know that Miles knows of a prehistoric dragonfly called Meganora. I think Kara might have mentioned that one. Um, that is so cool. Thanks, very cool. Yeah. Well, well, thank you guys so much. Say goodbye to Kara and Renee. And we hope you'll join us again next week for Cuta Bear Nature News. Bye.